Manscaped. Support for the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, providing you with the best tools for your grooming experience. Let's face it, we've all had our fair share of close calls while trimming below the belt. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. They've spent years perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. The -the state-of-the-art trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skincare technology, a battery that will last up to 90 minutes, waterproof technology that allows you to groom in the shower, and an LED light feature which illuminates grooming areas for closer and more precise trimming. We both know that cleaning up down there is a must, so you might as well use the best. Help us usher in a new outside the industry sponsor and solidify a relationship with this great company long into the future, all while improving your grooming experience. Trim that junk of yours and order today to help us out. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20. Welcome to the Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast with your host, two-time defending ATV motocross national champion, Cody Jensen. Am I on air? Yeah. What's up, everybody? We're back. I'm your host, Cody Jansen, and welcome to another big time episode, episode 37 of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast, presented by our title sponsor, CST Tires. Shout out to fellow Wisconsinite, the voice of Supercross himself, for helping us roll out a brand new intro to kick off season three of our show. We have an episode tonight that I know you've all been waiting for. Joel Hattrick, who is always such an open and authentic guest, joins us tonight to discuss his 2020 season, his decision to switch to Yamaha, what that means for 2021, and so much more. Following the two-time champ, you'll hear directly from the source, the brand that's been the center of attention really all season long, but now more than ever. Scott Newby from the outdoor division at Yamaha will join us for a super interesting talk about the inner works at Yamaha, why the manufacturer continues to prioritize ATVs, Chad Wienan's seven titles, and their outlook for 2021, including his thoughts on Joel Hetrick choosing Blue Crew. We're stoked to bring this show to you, especially on the heels of our previous episode with Casey Greek previewing Joel's big switch and Chad Wienan talking about his most recent title. This feels like a perfect follow-up and balanced coverage. You'll hear Joel dig into some instances on this episode where we heard Chad Wienan talk about the same scenario, just from a different perspective on the previous episode. So this is going to be a lot of fun. But before we dig in, there's some great people that I need to credit for making this show possible. Thanks to CST Tires. Purchase the best tires on the market directly at shop.csttires.com. Thanks to Yamaha, including Scott Newby, who you'll hear later on this episode. Thanks to the world's oldest and most innovative oil brand, Team Valvoline. Thanks to SSI Decals, the graphics choice of all the top riders and teams in ATV motocross. Thanks to Wienan Motorsports. It's an honor to have the support of Chad and his business. You already know DID offers the best chains on the market, including the 520 ATV2 X-Train chain, thanks to those guys. Thanks to the crew at the Decker Training Facility. Preparation and improvement continues so you guys can flourish this off-season. Make sure if you're headed south to ride this winter, it's at the Decker Training Facility. Thanks to Gripped Gloves. Trust them for an economically priced glove that looks cool and fits comfortable. Thanks to Namira Technologies and Bronco ATV and UTV components. Thanks to Forwards Carbon, whose rider support request period is open through the end of November, so head over to fwcarbon.com today to apply for that. Thanks to DP Brakes. Outbreak the competition with the unquestioned leader in motorsports and power sports braking. Apply to join their team as well. Thanks to Launderville Steel Enterprises, who serves as a full-service steel and concrete supplier of new and surplus steel, aluminum, and stainless steel products headlined by their 4130 chromoly tubing and plate. 
Thanks to Factory 43, whose bumpers, nerf bars, and grab bars can be found equipped on the Phoenix Racing Quads, including tonight's guest, Joel Hetrick. Thanks to Bike Strikes and Quads, LLC, 40,000 new and used parts in stock, offering new and used OEM parts for three-wheelers, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides. Thanks to Roman Health. If you're struggling with ED, go to GetRoman.com digging for help today. And finally, thanks to Evans Waterless Power Sports Coolant and Avocado Green Mattresses. We pride ourselves in partnering with only the best brands inside and outside of the industry, so better your riding experience and your lifestyle by supporting the sponsors who support us. Help us out by supporting these great companies, and for any products that fall through the cracks, head over to our website and click the Rocky Mountain ATVMC link. By doing this, we get credited for sending you there, and it helps us in a major way. We all purchase from online e-tailers, so next time you do, access that link for Rocky Mountain ATV MC on our website to help us out. Once again, thanks to all of our sponsors. All right, guys, we're stoked to finally talk to this next guest, brought to you by Manscaped and their Lawnmower 3.0 electric trimmer. Go to manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free shipping using code DIGGINGDEEP20 at checkout. It's legend of the sport, two-time AMA ATV Pro Class National Champion, Mr. Joel Hattrick. What's up, buddy? Thanks for jumping back on with us. What's up, Cody? Happy to be back on, talk about uh, some interesting changes we have. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Big, uh, big topic to discuss tonight, for sure. But uh, of course, um, I'd like to first talk about uh, it being another strong season for you. You added five wins to your already legendary career, came up a little short on the championship, but you fought down to the bitter end. How are we feeling about 2020 as a whole? Uh, well, definitely 2020 for all of us wasn't the best of years. I mean, this year was tough from the get-go. Uh, but yeah, like you said, it was, you know, it was a really good year for me. Uh, five overall wins, another whole shot championship, fastest qualifier. I got to throw that stuff in there. It sounds good. <laughs> but no, it's all stuff that's, you know, adding up on the, on the resume. And it's really cool to have that behind me. Um, we definitely sure are disappointed with the championship and how that all turned out. But, um, you know, just the cards didn't go in my favor for uh, one race, I guess you could say this year. And, and that race was hard to, you know, dig out of. But other than that, we had a really spectacular year with a lot of good races, a lot of good battles, and, you know, won some some pretty impressive motos. For sure. And you kind of started it by putting everything in perspective, right? I mean, we, if things would have went a little differently, we might have not had any races to go to. So um, in exactly. general... Yeah, in general, at least we got to go to the races and you got to uh, put that thing on the racetrack. And like I said, you fought till the bitter end. But uh, yeah, we might as well get right into it because obviously um, there's going to be some change for 21. Um, and, and that's going to be a whole new kind of chapter to your career. So uh, it's obvious that we had to get you on here to talk about it. And uh, everybody knows by now it's been the biggest news in ATV motocross <laughs> in some time. You and the, and the Phoenix Racing Team are going to be on Yamahas for 2021. So what can you tell us about that? Um, you've been riding the, the machine a little bit. We've seen the Rip It Up Films videos and, and stuff. So what's the, what's the Yamaha like and uh, what are your early reactions um, um, to to riding the thing um got a lot of good reactions out of riding that thing um you know for years and years I never got to ride a fully built Yamaha and you know I really didn't think I was missing much honestly just because of how well I was doing on the Honda and you know just knowing that what everyone was telling me and putting in my head like that quad was going to fit me the best and there was nothing else really that I could go for that was going to be any better so that was my you know, mentality was like, this is it. You know, I, I don't know if I can ride the Yamaha, this or that. But once I got on it, first day I got on it, it's just like anything else. I was thinking about it earlier. I was like, you could give me a 400DX, a stalker. And if that's all I had to race at the end of the day, I'd be damn fast on it. So, <laughs> right. So you give me, you give me four or five months on a, on a, on a unit that is a quality machine. Like that Yamaha is really awesome. So mm-hmm. I think it's going to, it's going to elevate the sport a little bit more as far as the the speed and, and the level that we're going to be going at. Okay. Um, just, just because of how well it handles right now and, and not with the front end wise, like I, I feel like my TRX is still turning better than it as of right now, but the way it, you know, it plants in the corners, the way it uh, comes out of the corners um, and, and hits those acceleration bumps and, and braking bumps the way it does, dude, it's, 
that part of it, that rear end of it is hard to, hard to compare to right off the bat. I noticed it. So okay. I was really impressed with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I kind of piggybacking off what you said there, um, listening to the, the Q and a you did with, with gloop rip it up films. Um, yeah, you said you'd be fast on anything. So, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> like that part, that part, uh, is obvious, I think to so many of us, but how much of the change had to do with the one moto that you referenced earlier? Cause you also in that rip it up films Q and a talked about the reliability. So is that the, yeah. Is that the number, was that the number one driving force to this switch? Oh yeah. You, you would, uh, you'd be, I'll tell you the story actually. Cause you know, David, I think he'll be fine with it. Okay. Um, so right after, uh, that moto at pleasure Valley, the one where I had the DNF, um, I gave him one of them wine coolers of Seagram's or something. And I was like, you know, sorry, man, just tough weekend. And he's like, Oh, I know it. He's like, it's, I think it's time for a change. And I looked at him and I was like, yep, I think it is too. So we, we put it into perspective right there. And, and I, and he called me a couple of days later and he's like, I hope, I hope you're serious about that. He said, cause I was, I was serious. He said, I want you, you know, I want you to do the best you can. And I, I hate seeing you have these problems that take you out for the championship. Okay. He said, I want you, I want your legacy to, you know, go on for years and years and I thought that was really awesome. And, you know, for David to be willing to do whatever it takes for, for me and the team to be the best it can be. I think we both kind of knew at that point, I think that's the route we need to take to eliminate any um, mechanical failure with the, with the motor side. I mean, every bike breaks. We've seen it with Chad. We've seen it with me, but you know, I think we'll just be in a little better position with the, the motor and honestly probably be able to save a, a few pennies at the end of the day, being able to run, a motor longer throughout the season rather than having to do so much maintenance to the TRX. Absolutely. Um, I think that that is very telling about David because I think it shows how, how much he wants to win, how much he wants to see uh, oh, yeah. you succeed, but also like, you know, we all know all of us that know David firsthand, like the dirt bike side of things, uh, all of that stuff is, is also, a big part of his heart. Right. So mm -hmm. um, that's why I didn't, I don't think it was on my radar at all because I didn't think, I didn't know if it could happen with, mm -hmm. with the dirt bike side of things. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, so I think that that's very telling for, uh, for David to uh, say, Hey, we're going to, we're willing to do whatever we have to do. So I guess like at what point did it actually come together that this was going to happen because um you talked about it i had i know i knew this but you talked about it on the rip it up films video that there mm -hmm. you you wrote it during the season still yeah so yeah. so how fast did this all come together because um i said this to casey i think on the last episode but i was surprised how like the season just gets over with and you guys already have these yamahas built and i'm like Mm -hmm. Well, I was like curious and then I start to yeah. learn more about what happened behind the scenes. So talk a little bit more about that. Okay. So yeah, we, uh, we had one built. Um, I think it was probably shoot. There's two rounds before the end. Um, so it had been three palms. I think it was done before three palms or at three palms, whatever the case may be. Okay. And I think we wrote it. I forget when I wrote it. I the short term memory is terrible with me. Okay. I, I, I wrote it prior to one of the, the events one of the races but i don't remember which one okay and, and at that point i was like ah we're still a little off but um you know we still were in a good position having the bike built and everything like that so sob came along and he wanted to, we wanted to do a test after that we tested the monday after and um really made some big improvements i was pumped on that but yeah it, it's been it's been in the works for so long but i think david just had to you know clear everything up with honda make sure that was a you know a okay deal for him to do this cuz he's still you know running the honda show um but the phoenix honda dirt bike side of it and that's all still a go and they're 100% supporting him so just you know you've seen the new phoenix atv instagram he kind of you know made some adjustments to his team to make it all you know work but yeah. um separate you know, a little like, bit yeah, yeah. separation but 
um, you know, it seems like all that's working in now, but it's been a, it's been a long time coming. We're just trying to get everything dialed in. That's why when I was telling you, I was like, I don't know, I don't know much yet, but I can yeah. talk about what I know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's why I didn't want to, I'd like to, to know more of like the, the backstory, like you just talked about and stuff. Uh, not so much specifics with going forward. I do think yeah. it's really, I do think it's really cool though, because you touched on the dirt bike side of things mm-hmm. and Phoenix racing Honda motorcycles looks Mm -hmm. like looks like next year could be the biggest year by far they've ever had with some of the guys that that some of the guys that are rumored to be going that way possibly so um i i don't know if i talked about it on air but i talked about it with casey that this is huge for david because like i said anybody that that knows him personally knows that that's a a big part of his uh his Mm -hmm. heart so so that's really cool that everybody could coexist right you you guys on the side were able to get to a point where you're just making the best move for your racing career right now and Mm -hmm. and that didn't affect anything on his two-wheeled side so i think it's, it's the best of both worlds across the board but you rode a honda for so many years you talked about it a little bit you talked about it on the the rip it up films uh q a that i referenced earlier take me through what it's been like for you like is it uh is it is it, it is it weird is it odd to make a switch like that that it's something different or i'm kind of thinking maybe it's more like rejuvenating and and kind of uh like a fresh start new chapter yeah. type thing that's why that's the way i would think you're feeling 100 percent. it's like uh you're dirt, you ride dirt bikes a little bit too right yeah so it's yep. like it's like when you get done with the season and you can ride your dirt bike every day. That's yeah. like, it's like the funnest thing cause it's new and it's different. And yep. that's exactly what that Yamaha was. And it's still like that. I've only put, I just was trying to check the hour meter before I came down here, but I think I probably put 15 hours on it total. So okay. I've got like some good riding on it. Yeah. Um, but that's dyno tuning and, and you know, that stuff as well, but I've got some good time on it. Feel really good. So I just lost my train of thought. Well, no, it's, 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 it is exciting. That's exactly. uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. I know That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly that feeling though. I just even remember like like big changes. I remember like riding a slipper clutch for the first time mm-hmm. years ago or, or and stuff like that, and thinking like all of a sudden it was like a, a totally like I don't know. It just changed things enough that it was like exciting again. So, yeah. Well, um, that's that, that's where I was at with it, and every yeah. time I've been riding it, it's felt like that, and just like the differences of the machine feeling them. I look back at some races I've raced and the ones I've got beat at specifically. And I'm like, that makes so much sense how I, you know, I couldn't hit that line, but Chad could, or I, you know, Thomas hit this line and I couldn't hit it. Okay. It's just so cool to see that kind of stuff, being able to ride it now. Um, and the throttle response and the power of it, it is just so much fun, dude. I love it. Okay. And, and I was going to ask you that before, and I guess I forgot as we, as we, uh, switch topics, but, you referenced um, maybe riding it before Three Palms. And then at Three Palms specifically, that was the first and only place uh, from the side of the track that I could see. It was like Chad, even though he's bigger and, and you know, you should have some advantages in that way. He was able to get over some of the jumps specifically mm-hmm. it looked like in that pro section, he was yeah. able to get over some of the stuff better than, than you were like we watched yeah. every lap where I, he was making things clean and you were trying your tail off and still oh, clipping your, clipping your tires and stuff like and, that. So, so that has to feel like amazing heading into next season. I would think. You have no idea. I was so upset with that race, you know, knowing that was a huge weekend for me regardless. And then getting there and seeing the track, I'm like, Oh heck yeah, this is, this is perfect. But for some reason, the track deteriorated in such a weird way that I couldn't get out of the corners because it was so choppy. Like the acceleration, my bike just wouldn't, yep. wouldn't stay hooked up and go. And then I just, I wasn't getting the lift off the jumps and, or I just didn't have the the power or, something in that area to me wasn't working right and i i had to ride that race so hard dude and i there's not many people who know but after saturday i i couldn't eat very much just because being you know so stressed out of course but i supplemented you know i was fine i had enough energy to race and yep. you know we did have really a, a killer moto we had good battles the entire saturday and sunday but after saturday i go to subway and i was trying to get some dinner and dude, I had the cold sweats and I get out the door from subway, threw up and got to the car, threw up again. And I don't know what it was. I don't know if I was just depleted or dehydrated or what, but 
I knew after that, I was like, I raced that quad as hard as I could race it. And, you know, that was all I could do. So I was upset, you know, I going home from that race, I'm like, this is, you know, it's going to be tough to, to beat them, you know, straight up. And uh, I'm not trying to, you know, who was it? Osborne them for the championship. Right. So, I mean, from the problems we've already had earlier in the year, I didn't listen to his podcast, but I'm sure he said something about it. Um, from those problems, I just like, I wasn't, you know, with 10 points, mm. I would have to do something drastic and I wasn't going to do that. I had, you know, people in my ear, take them out, take them out. Well, I'm always, I just want to beat them straight up. So mm -hmm. that's my thing. And, you know, at that race, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I still wanted to win the motos and we just struggled a bit in moto one, but put her down moto two and got that win luckily. Yeah, so I had heard, or, or maybe I saw, you must have been sick, like, right after the moto. Because I'm pretty sure somebody came up to me and said, hey, Joel's, like, behind the rig right now. Like, this was, like, right after the second Oh, moto. yeah. I was yeah. throwing I, – I had so much sand in my throat, I was, like, throwing yeah. up right then, too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Carly told me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's um, crazy. I, I, I was, like – I didn't feel sick right there. I just knew, like, I had sand, so much sand in my throat because I had my mouth open. Right. And <laughs> I was, like, I couldn't – freaking breathe and I was throwing up like crazy <laughs> okay okay so maybe yeah whatever maybe that was Sunday I can't remember but whatever it was uh I knew that you were dealing with some stuff there and um yeah so you already knew that you were switching at that point uh or, yeah. or at least at least um, it was still my choice it was still up to me if I wanted to make the switch or not and I, I personally still wanted to make the switch regardless okay but being that you knew um I mean, it like you worked, you you've worked at that point, like however many months, basically one whole year to try mm -hmm. to win, to try to win a championship. But it probably was like in the back of your mind, you're like, Hey, we're, we're changing. I'm not going to have to endure this feeling for very long. Chad, yeah. and I, before I get too far away from this, the one coolest thing I took from Chad's interview was that he was, he said, I'm proud of Joel because it probably wasn't the easiest decision to move from what you've been on for forever to move to something that like it's almost kind of in Chad's space, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, um, so I, I thought that that was really interesting. But when Casey was on last week, he basically said that this is going to elevate your ceiling going forward. Now I've heard enough of you talking on here and on Gloop's Q&A you did with him um, that I feel that same way. He said he, you know, kind of felt like you were being held back by the Honda. And I had never necessarily felt that before. Until Neither have I. Right. Until, like you said, in Texas, I just, mm -hmm. I, I saw, I saw it. I don't know why, yeah. but I, yeah, saw there, there, I saw it there. Multiple for the people time. said it to me and, and I was, and, and David did too. He's like, we need, we need to get you something different. We need, you know, you, you can't just get pulled out of the turn and said, you did everything you could. Right. And I didn't, you know, I'm the type of guy, like, I don't make any excuses. I come off the track so mad at myself. I was like, I would have rather, exact words, quote unquote, after Saturday, I said, I would have rather wrecked than lost that moto. But okay. David, yeah. David was like, he didn't know what to say to me right then. And then he called me later and he's like, I got, I understand what you meant now. He said, you would have rather wreck than, you know, cause that would have been your excuse of how you lost. But he said, you had no excuse to why you lost. So you just would have rather wreck. And I'm like, exactly. Like I, I did everything I could and still wasn't able to beat him. So to me, like that's, that sucks. Well, it's like, it's, it's like bringing a knife to a gunfight, right? Like nobody, mm -hmm. nobody wants to, uh, wants to feel like they're having to race. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of like the hybrid thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like if you had to be on a production bike and you had to race a hybrid for some people, like that's kind of my stance on that is unless yeah. everybody can have an even playing field. Um, I just don't think it's fair. So I, as I, I, hundred percent get uh get what you're saying that's a it's a frustrating thing to to think or feel like hey i'm better than this but i can't show it yeah and like i said i've never thought that ever until it just seemed like this year like 2020 man just jacked my stuff up and we just <laughs> we we weren't you know where we needed to be and we made a lot of changes during season i think just you know not scrambling but just being you know trying stuff because i was like I, I need a little more power i don't know if right. they stepped it up this much or if we're you know, just stagnant on what we got. And, and typically like, I never ask for more power because I'm, I'm so small. So I'm like, I don't want any more power. I ride this thing. Great. Right. Well, I've heard but, plenty. Of, I'll, I've heard plenty of stories over the years where like 
yeah, like they like people in the past, this is years years in the past, but yeah. where you could have had more power and you chose not to mm-hmm. because you just you ride them so hard you don't want the thing to kill you. Yeah, I I, I wasn't getting tired riding how you know I was riding with the slower bike, you know. So right. I was like, heck yeah, I'll, I can do whatever I want on this thing, and I know uh-huh. exactly what it's going to do, and I'll, I'll just you know, ride it and abuse it. But now it's like, I, I'm older. I want to ride like in, in the meat of the quad and go through the rough better and not have to freaking jack myself yeah. up for 20 something minutes. Right. Well, and it's no, it's no secret, right. That, that Thomas kind of started um, last, it seemed like the end of last season, he, I think he got together, you know, the, the combination he had, whether it be the Baldwin part, PP performance tuning, whatever he had, they found something at the end of last year. And then it seemed like um, you can kind of uh, connect the dots with the PP performance tuning and, and that Chad did this year and stuff, but mm-hmm. they, they found some stuff like, oh, yeah. like oh, especially, oh, yeah. especially until the end of last year. Like it was like, in my mind, it was like, Hey, I just don't feel like until something drastic changes, Honda's the quad to have. Like we mm-hmm. knew, we knew like in the technology has been around for so long yet. I don't know with the Suzuki front end, the geometry, like everything's just so figured out. Yeah, it, was, it, it, was, it was like, I don't think that anything can beat it. And, yeah. and everybody ups their game. And now here we are a year later, it's like, everything's so much different. So obviously you feel the same, like Casey did, this is going to springboard your program across the board, but, um, Let's hope. <laughs> yeah. So I guess, uh, the way I want to ask it is like, what do you think specifically? Um, cause we've heard things that I heard you mention already, like that rear end is really good. Talk yeah. about, talk about like, is there anything that, uh, holds you back like with that new quad or because I heard you talk about on Gloop's uh, interview too, like, um, how is the front end? Like take me through the ups and downs of, of, of the four wheeler. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, rear end is first day ever non-comparable to TRX. It's night and day better. Okay. You know, just going with what we have. Yep. Um, and it works even better. So I was happier with that. Um, now the front end first day I wrote it, I did not like it at all. I felt like I couldn't turn because the turning radius was like so bad, but I had stock Yamaha stuff, stock flag, stock everything. Okay. So I knew it could be better. So, you know, I'm still positive. Uh, we get the new flag and that's what I've been riding with now getting really comfortable on it and it turned much better. I don't think it's a con compared to the TRX. I know it doesn't turn on a dime like the TRX right now, but like I said, I'm still positive. Mike just made me some new A-arms and they're Suzuki compatible and that's what's going on next. So okay. that might be the difference. Okay. And if it is, I love you, Mike Walsh. Um, but <laughs> if not, we'll, we'll keep working at it, but I think it's going to get better and better with the more time on it. Like I could race what I have right now. And I think I'd do really well mm-hmm. at this yeah. time right now. Yep. Um, but you know, with the, with what we got going on, like the motor package is so sweet right now. I love it. It's it's definitely a few notches up from what I raced this year. Um, Okay. The the throttle response is killer. The fuel injection, just the power it makes the PP, the dual injector system. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Like this, this is the fastest fuller I've ever rode. Okay. That's saying Um, something. Yeah. Yeah. And it is. And I rode a lot of TRXs and I rode a lot of people's full wheelers and this is the fastest. It hooks up good still. Um, a con that I'm dealing with right now is it has so much torque that it blows the tires off. Oh, so, shit. okay. <laughs> so we, uh, we practice some, some starts and that's gonna, I don't think it's going to hinder it. I just think I have to figure it out. You know? Okay. Sure. Yep. Um, cause the TRX is, I got that thing figured out. Oh yeah. yeah it's, you do. it's like, a, it's, it's programmed in my head. So I'm doing the starts like I would on a TRX and, and it's just not, it's not fully compatible yet with that, but I'll get that dialed in. I think it's, it'll work the same. I think it'll pull out longer. So the, you know, I think I'd be, if I get a good jump, I think my start will be better. I'd be further ahead. So are, that, a, are the gears longer, like a dirt bike almost compared yeah. to your TRX? That's what it feels like. And that's why I feel like it's good, really good in the rough because the gear ratio is so much different, you know, okay. running a 1539, like I'm able to hold these gears out for a long time it still makes power up there and then i can lug like fourth and fifth gear in spots Mm -hmm. where i would have to be in fourth and third on the trx sure so there's just 
a lot of benefits with this motor package, I feel like. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's, that's super exciting. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on before we just uh, hammer out a couple uh, listener questions here before uh, I let you go was we, we heard some some things about uh, the, the team, people were hinting at the team needed to make some major changes and this, that, and the other thing. And you guys ultimately did make a lot of changes, but I've been kind of all season long uh, banging the table and, and shouting to anybody that would listen, like the Phoenix racing program is really good. You know, you mm -hmm. got your, your team is really solid. You guys have won championships and all these things You're you win all these races and, and all this stuff. So, um, I guess I, before I, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about it. And we really did touch on this already. Cause I, I yeah. you know, uh, David, the whole team, you guys wanted to get better at all, at all costs. Um, yeah. it ultimately ended up being a switch to Yamaha, but uh, I wanted to give you an opportunity to, um, kind of let people know how great the team and, and everything yeah. that you have That's going on is. Yeah, that's what people don't understand. I mean, if, if they were just to see how the shop operation is, um, it is no joke. I mean, it's a professional program with uh, two engine builders, specific room for them, strictly doing engine tuning and building and all that. Um, we have a dyno set up. Uh, we have countless guys in the, in the facility working for the quad side. And, you know, we have our specific guys for the dirt bike side. You know, granted, they probably help each other out. I'm not there all the time, but Right. You know, the, pro the problems that we've encountered have not been, you know, anyone in the shop with the chassis, anything like that. Like my mechanic, Gary, did a really, really good job for me all year long. Uh, we, not, we didn't have one thing fall off that machine. Not nothing came loose on us. Nothing crazy like that. Yep. He was very meticulous with finding, you know, cracked parts. Like we had a cracked uh, Walsh pipe mount at Texas and he found that. And that's hard to find. You know, it's, yeah. there's a crack on the weld. You, yep. you know how it is. It's tough to see them. Yep. So I was impressed with that, and you know I'm I'm always impressed with the team. They have a lot going on, and they get it done. Um, you know, it's a big operation. They got a lot on their plate, but mm -hmm. you know the the one problem we had, I wouldn't say, is is enough to be like, wow, that team. You know, they they need to figure their crap out. I, I think we have our stuff figured out. I think you know just the way I abuse four wheelers, it you know I could ride this Yamaha, and the same thing could happen, man. I mean, I abuse four wheelers. That's just that's what it comes down to. Yeah, for sure. I think it's, uh, you said it, you said it as, as good as anybody could. It's an unprecedented operation with the facility you guys had. I mean, there's nothing else in our sport like it. So um, that's, that's why I just wanted to hear you say it, you know what I mean? Yeah, Give yeah. people that opportunity. So I'm stoked for you. I think whether you're a Honda fan or a, or a team blue crew person, I mean, I think everybody like change is just fun. It's exciting. It, it, it inserts, uh, it inserts some intrigue. I feel like, because for a lot of consecutive years now, you and Chad have just lined up with basically kind of the same thing, right? It was yeah. just like a new chapter of the same book and uh, exactly. next year is going to be different. It's going to be exciting. And I think, uh, I think it's going to be exciting for, for all of us as fans of yeah. the sport, as racers. I mean, just to have like a little bit of unknown, like mm -hmm. that's extra, that's extra exciting. So oh, yeah, I could, I, Hey, I could do really good or I could be like top five. I don't know. Just, yeah. you, hey, you guys watch and find out. Right. There you go. That's a great teaser. But uh, yeah, I don't think anybody's buying it, pal. I think, uh, I think everybody knows what to expect from you. So um, especially after all the, all the great things you had to say uh, so far. So let like I said, let's, uh, let's hammer out a couple uh, listener questions before I let you go. We got, we, okay. we got hundreds. So I kind of uh, typically you kind of end up, hybriding them. Um, and you've answered some of them that I got crossed off already, but we got a bunch of questions about um, your riding style and technique. You talked already about the EFI um, and what that's like. And I think you could almost, you could hear in the Rip It Up Films videos that mm -hmm. you were able to manipulate the, the throttle even a little bit differently than we typically hear you. So, which yeah. I thought was really cool and really interesting. So between the fuel injection, the different weight between the, the Honda you're used to riding and the Yamaha, Yamaha, um, the different characteristics, obviously, of the front end, the rear end, all the stuff you've talked about. Is your riding style seeming to pretty much re remain the same, or have, are you having to tweak it a little bit? Um, good question. I think right now I'm, I'm riding the same. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's a little more difficult because how the, the chassis is of it. It's got a longer, I guess, from seat to peg height is, is taller for me. 
Okay. And I always, I've been telling everyone lately, I've been like, this is a big guy squat. I swear it is. And I talked to Mike, I'm like, please, can we do something? Let's lower it a little bit more. Let's lower the subframe. Okay. And he said we could, but I don't think I'm going to go that route. I have another seat that's like no seat foam. I saw people been asking about that. Like Europeans yeah. cut them to nothing. I have one like that. It's terrible, but I might go to that. I don't know yet. Um, <laughs> that's but funny. the riding that's... style has been the same. It's been like really comfy and it doesn't feel any heavier to me at all. Okay. Um, yeah, I like I'm turning it like the TRX. Like everyone's like, oh, you can't turn that thing like a TRX. Oh, I am. So, and I don't know how good I am at it right now. I've been only riding with a few different guys, but mm -hmm. I feel like it's fast. And I'm, right now I feel really comfortable. That's awesome. Yeah. The seat stood out to me in the very first picture that I saw. Um, so the seat was interesting. Uh, but yeah, I always, I've always thought of it as a big guy quad. I just didn't know if it's, it was the way that it looked or if it was just like we've seen Chad on it for so long. So you think of it as a big guy quad, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really exciting. Your, your riding style, like to me, to the, to the average person looked, uh, looked the same, like you said, it was mm -hmm. just, it was more of the manipulation and stuff of the throttle that seemed, yeah. uh, seemed different. And that's gotta be so cool for Dude, it's so much fun. Oh, I bet. Yeah, for sure. So, um, next question I kind of had was, was what's your favorite thing about it? If you could, if you could pinpoint one thing that you enjoy most about this thing, what would it be? Um, just one thing. Oh man, right now I'm loving two things I love the most, but one, um, just all around, you can hear it, you know, you hear me doing it in the videos The just the snappiness and how crisp that bike is all the time. Yeah. So it's just, it's hard to compare with the TRX being a little, it has that dead spot in it. And when it gets hot, the TRX will cut out in rollers. Like I'm mm -hmm. sure you deal with it. Yeah. Dude, that thing, I was at Nick's, I rode 20 minutes straight. It never hesitated. Once it goes through them cupped out rollers, like, like no problem at all. And sure. That's, that's like one of the main thing is just how crisp it is and, and how fun it is to just rev it up. Starting to sound like a, a full blown Yamaha guy now. <laughs> well, it, it is interesting too, because I, you would, I mean, you've suffered heartbreak, you know, from these things and I have too, um, mm -hmm. the, the Honda. So yeah, yep. like, I just, I felt like it, there was points in my career where it was in the back of my head at all times, like something might happen with this thing. So to oh, think, yeah. so to think that, I mean, because I mean, you've seen it firsthand. I'm not telling you anything like mm -hmm. Ch Chad's riding those things hard and they oh, yeah. never, they never break. No, like he's literally never broke other than a chain. So, yeah. um, dude, I gotta, I had to be careful in qualifying Carly would come off the track. Why are you going so hard in qualifying? You're rev bombing your quad. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm just trying to win. Right. So I, I, I get yelled at by my wife to go slower and qualifying. So my quad class, so I can get a freaking a, a win. It's just oh crazy. my gosh. Yeah. Well, Strategies. hopefully, right. Hopefully those things, uh, those times have changed, but uh, I hope. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I, I really, I can't wait. I think it's the coolest thing. Um, like I said, change is so much fun to, uh, to kind of track and, mm -hmm. uh, and see how things go. So um, does this mean we can expect to see you in pro stock then? Uh, yeah, as of right now, um, that's the plan. I mean, David talked about it and it's, he's, you know, full bore on that too. So that'll be fun. I think uh, hopefully we can get a couple more entries in there and, and keep yeah. that class going, keep it growing. And like, I've never like, you know, push that class just because I, I couldn't race it. Duh. Right. So of course, of course. I raced it on the LTR and just wasn't comparable mm -hmm. um, for, yeah. for what we had to have in, you know, the bath and all that. But I think now with this Yamaha, it'll be comparable. I'll be able to go out there and have some fun, mix it up, have good mm -hmm. racing. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I'm going to tell people how nice that quad is stock and, and what the damage they can do on it. Like my right. brother-in-law, Nick, or Austin Moser, He's like wanting to buy one now. He rode Nick's at uh, Nick Janusis and he's like, I got to have one of these. It's the uh -huh. most fun thing ever. So, oh, well, I think that so many of us, so many of us uh, have been thinking we need to go that way. And, mm -hmm. and I think that too, um, it's so cool for like, we need to support the brand that's supporting our sport. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we, we have uh, Scott Newby from Yamaha coming up right after you. And oh, wow. I can tell you that uh, Yamaha is stoked that you're going to be on their machine. Yeah. 
and That's, hey, they seem like it. Right. And hey, for you and everybody else involved, whether it's pro stock, any of the classes where you're on a Yamaha or, or production stock, any of these classes, there's, mm-hmm. gr- there's great contingency to be had. And Yamaha, oh, yeah. Yamaha, based off of what happened this past season, there's a rider that uh, is going to win a Yamaha uh, brand new YFC 450R for, yeah, awesome. for for racing the production stock class. So yeah, across, the, across the board, uh, I mean, you can make a bunch of contingency money and all these people. So I feel like uh, it's just a, it's a great look for the sport for an icon like you to be moving towards the brand that continues to support our sport. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I only hope good things come out of it. And I hope other you know manufacturers see this and, you know, see that we're still doing it. We're still out here and we're trying to grow the sport. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of good racing and a lot of good athletes. And I think that, you know, rather than a lawnmower racing or bowling, I think we should be on ESPN. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. I love, bowling. Hey, don't get me wrong. I love bowling and I love my lawnmower, but I uh-huh. tell you what, our racing is way better than that. Well, and, and I feel like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir. Like you're going <laughs> to agree with me here, but, yeah. um, anybody that sees our sport firsthand is like, Oh my God, I can't believe what those guys do on those things. So, so, and then to hear, and like I said, you guys are going to hear this coming up from Scott, but they put so much stock in ATV racing and he as a media guy is so involved in, in ATV stuff specifically that to hear the way that they care about the four wheel guys, all Mm -hmm. of us, um, like, they want to continue to support, continue to yeah. innovate. And I mean, I, I, I mean, you wanted to better your program to get your, give yourself the best shot at winning again next season. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that was moving to Yamaha. So it's like, how does any of us not want to switch to Yamaha now? Like that was yeah. the, you were the last card yeah. everybody was holding on to, you know? <laughs> I know it's, that is sad. And I try to, I, I was telling a couple people that, cause that is, I knew that was going to happen. It's just like, you know, with anything, you, I run moose gear, you know, kids, they want to, they want to run moose gear. And that's awesome. That's what, you know, that's why we get paid to be athletes and promote these brands. Uh, but I was sad about the TRX thing. I'm like, damn it. Everyone's going to move. And, and it sucks because the TRX, you know, it's an awesome machine. Oh, it is for sure. But yep. It's not going to be awesome when we can't, you know, can't get parts or, or we're, you know, blowing up every race or whatever. Like, I never had any problems in, in the amateur ranks on a TRX or anything like that, like six, eight laps, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, like I tell everyone, I, I'm a different breed on a full wheeler and I will abuse it. And I think, you know, for, for our program and for me and, and the best for our future, I think we made the, the best decision. Absolutely. There's no, uh, no arguing against that. Last question I got for you. Maybe you saw it. I know you were tagged in it on Facebook. Shane Shimon, uh, he wants to know, <laughs> Uh, how much harder is it to fight off Carly now that you're riding a Yamaha? Oh, oh man. <laughs> well, see, that's, that's the thing. Like she, she probably, she was kind of mad at me for going to switch. She's like, are you sure you're going to be able to go out there and, and go as fast as you can now? Like, oh, no. I'll tell you what, Carly is the biggest supporter, motivator. Like she is a team player from day one. Like she wants me to go out there and just kick everybody's ass. And it's the funniest thing because she's so quiet. But she will go on that fence, and I see pictures of her screaming, and I just love it. But Oh, yeah. She was doing it right in front of us. She was doing it right yeah. in front of us in Texas. And then I saw those pictures, too, and she's, she's, uh-huh. she's all in, which yeah. uh, is the coolest thing. But uh, I had to mention, I, I got a good laugh yeah. out of that comment. I saw that question. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I think, uh, like I said before, speaking of Yamaha and, and all, the, all the great positivity around that, we have Scott Newby from Yamaha coming up shortly, which um, we're excited about that for sure. But Joel, I, I know uh, you're a busy dude, so I appreciate you jumping on here with us, kind of filling us in on the program and all the changes, all the excitement. There's no way to, mm-hmm. to come away from uh, this conversation and not feel your excitement for next year and kind of feeling like it's a, like it's a new chapter. So I just wanted to uh, be able to thank you for coming on and congratulate you on a great season and um, congrats on all the big changes. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to see it unfold. So uh, just really appreciate you coming on and, and, and sharing all the news with us. Well, I appreciate it. I'm glad to be back on here and yeah, definitely give me another call in a few months or weeks. So let me, uh, you know, get some more riding on it. I'll, I'll tell you some more info, but you know, I'm happy to talk about it. It is super fun for me, even talking about it. You know, you see me with a smile on my face all the time. Like this is, 
this is a huge deal on ATV motocross and it's a huge deal in our program and I'm super, super pumped on it. And, uh, you know, thanks for having me and I look forward to, uh, getting back on here and talking with you again. All right, pal. Well, uh, we, we really, really appreciate it. And I uh, can't wait to track this story as it unfolds. That's former two-time champ, Joel Hetrick, who will be back on a new machine to try to get back to on top next season. Brought to you by Manscaped. Use discount code DIGNITY20 for 20% off at manscaped.com. See you in a few weeks, brother. Appreciate it. See you, buddy. Thank you. We'll get right back to the show. But now a word from our sponsors. And thank you for listening to these ads. Without these great companies, none of this would be possible. Show your support for the people who support us. Before Digging Deep was even a reality, back when it was just an idea, CST Tires already believed in us, which is fitting because no one believes in their tires more than I do. Our title sponsor, CST Tires, and their Pulse MXR tires continue to hook every rider strong enough and willing to grab a handful of throttle after mounting them on their ride. Used by Thomas Brown to win races and clinch a third straight Quad Cross of Nations title, Nick Janusa when he grabbed his first career pro class podium, and myself, Cody Jansen, as I rode my Pulse MXR fronts and white label soft compound rears to back-to-back national championships in the Junior 25 Plus class. The Pulse MXR tire, available in soft and standard compounds, offers the highest level of traction, most predictable cornering, and superior wear characteristics when compared to the competition. Visit csttires.com to join the CST Takeover today or prepare to be beat by someone who did. CST Tires, where passion meets the ground. Anybody that I've gotten to try them, I've heard nothing but positive things back. We're proud to be Team Blue Crew here at the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast. Why choose Yamaha? Look no further than Chad Wienan's seven championships in the past nine seasons aboard his Yamaha YFZ 450R. Not to mention Yamaha is the leading OEM supporter of ATV racing and their support of this podcast proves it. For the 2020 ATVMX season, Yamaha's Blue Crew Racer Support Program will offer payout and prize opportunities, including a chance to win a brand new YFZ 450R. For more information, head to yamahaoutdoors.com and follow them on social media at Yamaha Outdoors today. All hail Blue Crew, the number one OEM supporter of ATV racing. For over 150 years, Valvoline has led the charge by being dedicated to constant improvement and innovation across all disciplines of racing. Valvoline has sponsored some of the greatest names in motorsports, and for the better part of a decade, I've been fortunate enough to be part of the historically great Team Valvoline. From my commuting vehicles to small engines, race quads, and everything in between, I trust nothing but Valvoline in all of my equipment. I've experienced increased function and durability as well as a longer life expectancy thanks to Valvoline's array of products and lubricants. Since 1866, Valvoline has been focused on bettering your experience, whether on road, on track, and everywhere in between. Upgrade to Valvoline today and check them out at valvoline.com. SSI decals is a name synonymous with ATV racing, synonymous with big time success, and absolutely synonymous with the best looking decals around. An offshoot of their parent company that was established in 1947, SSI first took shape from owner Ian Harris's passion for ATVs. With what started as just making numbers and decals for riders like Chad Wienan, the company quickly took off, and today you couldn't imagine ATV motocross without SSI decals. The graphics maker and designer now supports all the top teams in ATV motocross as well as teams and riders racing GNCC, Work Series, Pro Motocross and Supercross, Canadian Pro Motocross, Short Course Off-Road Trucks, UTVs, Snowcross, and oh yeah, six-time NHRA World Champion Clay Milliken. No project is too big or too small for SSI decals, making your identity stick with championship level graphics. Head over to SSIDecals.com today and then maybe call the doctor because things are about to get sick. The Digging Deep ATVMX podcast is brought to you in part by DID Racing Chain and their 520 ATV2 chain. This patented X-ring chain boasts a steel alloy construction for reduced weight, increased strength, and a longer overall chain life, making it the optimal ATV racing chain. Pick up an ATV2 chain today at your local dealer or wherever DID chains are sold. Don't forget about their motocross, off-road, and street bike chains as well. Wherever you go, go with DID. Hello listeners, this is Chad Wienens, AMA ATV Pro National Champion, an owner of Wienen Motorsports and proud partner of Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast. The two of us share a strong passion for ATV MX. Owning my own team gives us the ability to handpick the best products on the market for our racing program. With consistent testing, research, and development, 
We are confident that when choosing the products we believe in, our customers will be satisfied in building their own race program as well. We race what we sell. With brands like Fox Shocks, Walsh Racecraft, SSI Decals, Wrath Racing, and Henson Racing, just to mention a few, go to check out WeenanMotorsports.com to see the full lineup. Enter discount promo code DIGDEEP at checkout. Enough talking already. Get out and get some fresh air and go ride. Hope to see you at the track soon. We are proud to be partnered with Numira Technologies. Since 2001, Numira has led the charge in the ATV and side-by-side -side market, covering more applications than anyone else in the industry. Numira's advanced piston technology uses a NASA-exclusive aluminum alloy that helps to reduce expansion rates, that allows for tighter tolerances, and leads to higher overall engine performance for your machine. For more information about Numira's wide offerings of pistons, rings, gaskets, and industry-leading top-end repair kits, visit your local dealer or online at www.numira.com. Numira Technologies, pistons with an attitude. We are pleased to be partnered with Bronco ATV and UTV Components. Bronco has been an industry leader in replacement hard parts and accessories for all makes and models for over 15 years. With a catalog that includes a full line of electrical components, engine internals like rods and cylinders, all the way down to suspension parts and bearing kits. Bronco is your hard part source for whatever you need for whatever you ride. Available exclusively through distributors around the world. Visit your local dealer or online at broncoatv.com. The Digging Deep ATV MX podcast is also sponsored by DP Brakes, a longtime supporter of ATV racing and the world leader in centered brake technology. DP has been dominating the ATV world for decades by supporting the best four-wheeled racers on the planet. 2020 is no different, with an impressive lineup including Joel Hetrick and Phoenix Racing Honda Team, Cody Jansen and his Junior 25 Plus National Championship, Baldwin Motorsports, Nick Januza, Wesley Wolf, and much more in the ATV motocross. In GNCC Racing, DP has 16 of the top 17 pros heading into 2020. This includes the champ Walker Fowler, Bryson Neal, Chris Borich, Cole Richardson, Jared McClure, Adam McGill, and more. These riders continue to appreciate the high performance and impressive durability that their DP brakes have to offer, products that ultimately help place them on the top of the podium. Available at www.dp-brakes.com. Purchase at your local dealer or message us for the contact info today. What are you waiting for? Join the best ATV riders in the world on DP Brakes. Forworks Carbon's innovative lightweight products include top-notch seat covers, carbon fiber, and plastic hoods, gas tank covers, exhaust shields, shock guards, and much more. Whether you have an ATV, UTV, or snowmobile, Forworks has the goodies that will improve your ride and make you salivate. We trust Forworks for increased function and a sexier look, and you should too. Forworks Carbon always working hard to bring high quality and innovative parts to the market. Check them out today at fwcarbon.com. Just like the sport of ATV motocross as a whole, our Digging Deep community is brought together by the love for racing that we all share. Our sport is compiled of many great people and leading that charge is the Launderville family at Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply. This racing owned family business is a steel and concrete supplier serving the entire United States. Launderville Steel is a full-service steel supplier of new and surplus steel, aluminum, and stainless steel products headlined by the 4130 chromoly tubing and plate used in the building of chassis for ATVs and UTVs, off-road truck racing, late model dirt and pro tractor pulling series, drag racing, and more. Launderville Steel loves their racing just as much as we do, but don't forget about their concrete division as well. With over 25 years of experience, the Concrete Division can supply everything you need to complete your next business or personal project. Their central Midwest location enables LSE to easily serve customers across the United States. For a quote, additional info, answers to more of your questions, or to talk a little racing, head over to LaundervilleSteel.com or give them a call today. We are proud to be partnered with yet another racer-owned company. Thank you, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply. We are proud to be partnered with Gripped Gloves. Gripped is an ATV rider owned and operated brand with a rider in mind and the goal of keeping costs affordable. The Michigan based family operation recognizes riders' desire to showcase their identity. Owner David Payne's love for eccentric colorways and crazy patterns shows in his product something not often found in the work of big manufacturers. Here to push stereotypes and limitations, Grip's drive is to produce a glove with cool colors and designs that won't break the bank. 
With comfort and quality as key motivators, the Family Affair is constantly working on the next more innovative and improved glove. Get a grip on life, join the gripped movement, because no one wants a bland glove. Check them out today at grippedgloves.com, that's G-R-I-P-T gloves.com, and use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 to save at checkout. If you were to guess, on average, how many days people in the U.S. have to wait to see a doctor, what would you say? Americans have to wait around 29 days to see a doctor in major U.S. cities. And if you're dealing with a condition like erectile dysfunction, you want treatment ASAP. That's why our friends at Roman have spent years building a digital platform that can connect you with a licensed doctor in your state, all from the comfort of your home. Roman makes it convenient to get the treatment you need on your schedule. Just grab your phone or computer, complete a free online visit, and you'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. If the doctor decides that treatment is right for you, Roman's Pharmacy can ship your medication to you with free two-day shipping. You also get free unlimited follow-ups with your doctor anytime you have questions or want to adjust your treatment plan. With Roman, there are no commitments and you can cancel anytime. So if you're struggling with ED, go to GetRoman.com slash digging for your free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash digging for your free online visit and free two-day shipping. We are also proud of our partnership with Factory 43. Factory 43 was born in 2007, making Nerf bars for the Suzuki LTR, Honda TRX 450R, and Yamaha's YFZ 450. The brand soon added bumpers and grab bars and for years now has offered parts for all sport quads. The racer owned company strives to offer a quality product that installs easy, looks good, and holds up over time. For 2020, Factory 43 is the aluminum parts choice of the Phoenix Racing Team, providing riders like Joel Hetrick, Jeffrey Rastrelli, Chris Borich, and Grayson Eller with the motocross and cross-country versions of their Evo Nerf Bar and MX-style front bumpers. Head over to factory43atv.com to see their full line of products. Thanks to Factory 43. We are excited to dig deep with the support of Bikes, Trikes, and Quads, LLC. Celebrating their 10-year anniversary this May, the company was started by former racers selling three-wheeler parts out of a barn in upstate New York. Through hard work, accompanied by offering great service to their customers, BTQ LLC now has over 40,000 new and used parts in stock. But they haven't forgotten their roots, still offering used OEM parts for three-wheelers, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides. Parts are in stock and ready to ship with delivery within three days, including free shipping on orders over $50. Use discount code ATVMX at www.btqllc.com for $10 off orders of $50 or more. We're grateful to have Bikes, Trikes, and Quads LLC digging deep with us. Support our industry's grassroots businesses. Thank you, BTQ LLC. The Decker Training Facility at County Line MX is now open. This premier motocross training compound is located in beautiful Fountain, Florida, about a 40 minute drive from Panama City Beach. Their rapidly growing facility consists of a pro level national track, amateur and youth tracks, woods loop and mountain bike trails. Everything you need to train comfortably all winter long is available on site, including private cabins, a full gym, RV hookups, bathhouses, garage, dump station, wash bays and more. With accommodations for riders across the country and around the world, the Decker Training Facility will help you become the best rider you can be. Sign up for a group training session or a private lesson with nationally ranked pros. Train tougher, smarter, and harder this off-season at one of Florida's most luxurious facilities. For more information, go to DeckerTrainingFacility.com or find them on Facebook and Instagram. Decker Training Facility, your elite training experience. We are proud to be partnered with Avocado Green Mattresses. We all know that sleep and rest are an important part of any athlete's routine. Avocado's line of natural mattresses and pillows provide exactly the support you need to ensure you perform at your best while doing the best for the planet. The Avocado Mattress offers zoned back support with an internal support unit, meaning whether you are recovering from a hard day of riding or relaxing on a Sunday morning, you will be experiencing next level comfort. You can rest in peace knowing the components in your mattress and pillow are non-toxic, natural, and sustainably sourced. And getting your Avocado Green mattress could not be any easier. They offer a 100-night sleep trial, free shipping and return pickups, and a 25-year warranty. And if that wasn't enough, 
Rest assured knowing they have five-star ratings by verified customers, including some of the Digging Deep staff. Step up your sleep game by visiting avocadomattress.com. Thanks for listening, and remember to support our partners. Now back to the show. All right, guys, we're back, and I'm so pumped to talk to this next guest. He's brought to you by DID Racing Chain and their 520 ATV2 chain, but we're also going to say he's brought to you by Blue Crew from Yamaha. It's Scott Newby. What's up, Scott? Thanks for coming on. Hey, man, it's a pleasure to be here, to say the least. And, and of course, we are insanely proud and uh, humbled to be sponsored of the show as well. Oh, man, I, I'm, I'm stoked to get you on. Um, you know, yeah, you guys at Yamaha came on board the podcast your last off season, and, and I've been super, super proud myself for, um, you know, working with you guys every day since really sometimes I'm I'm sitting we're, we're putting these episodes together or we're doing the ad read or whatever it is and uh to to hear Yamaha being affiliated with our show I mean it's something I'm so proud of with a with such a legendary corporation like Yamaha it's a huge feather in our cap so first of all um first of all I have to thank you for all your support and uh, everything that you're doing for us here and the sport in general as well. So it's uh, we're, we're just as proud as hopefully you are to be affiliated with us. Oh yeah, no doubt. I mean, it certainly is a pleasure. It's even funny too, because I think of uh, when we first kind of started talking, you're like, well, you know, what should I say? You know, do you have like a script or anything? It's like, man, for me, you know, just be mm-hmm. real with it, whatever you, you think works best, then you just uh-huh. kind of roll with it. But in the back of my mind, I'm going, He's probably thinking, what the heck is this Yamaha guy, Yamaha guy doing, like set me up or something like that. But no, it's, it's been good times without a doubt. No, honestly, it's been, uh, it's been so awesome because yeah, you're exactly right. Um, from the beginning, you're like, you know, don't, don't uh, unauthenticate anything about Yamaha. Just do your thing, go about your business. But I mean, we spent the entire season basically praising Yamaha unprompted um, because, you know, you guys had to have had the best season ever in ATV motocross. Um, I kind of dubbed it the summer of Yamaha with Chad winning um, a title at the top level, something he's done six times previous, but then with Max Linquist winning Pro-Am and all the publicity that the, the pro stock class got, um, like I said, it was truly the, the summer of Blue Crew in my opinion. Yeah, it's been a phenomenal year for us racing wise across the board and even more so in, in ATV motocross. So, you know, you, you definitely love when a plan comes together. And I just think that shows that Yamaha, you know, we support the, we support the sport. We're here for it. And, you know, even with our increase in the Blue Crew support as well, I mean, it's just this been this great holistic, uh, you know, approach and success we've had. And, Love the fact that, you know, Ween was able to chalk up another title for himself, too, because, man, that was, uh, you know, it's always kind of like a little, I don't know, you get a little nervous and stuff, and we're always, you know, pumped and pushing for the guys, and, and thankfully he was able to seal the deal in the end. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just the whole combination, and that bike continues to get better and better, and with Chad's program seeming to get better and better, um, it, like I said, it was such a great look for Yamaha all season long, and then – when you compile, it's like everything aligned because, you know, Yamaha's continuing to support the, the sport of ATV racing. And then, you know, here comes the pro stock class, which basically, you know, we've, we've called it on the show. I think it's, you know, kind of a exclusive Yamaha class basically with the, the state of uh, the sport right now. And um, just in general, like, you know, it was, uh, it was Yamaha's all over the place. And I, I, I have to believe that the market share for Yamaha, at least in the sport ATV space, is much bigger than we've ever seen before, at least bigger than we've seen in some time. And I truly, um, I truly look at it like it's kind of like a changing of the guard. It's really like this takeover type feel, you know, when you have um, riders and, and guys that have been on Hondas for, well, or whatever brand, but um, a lot of guys, you know, that formerly rode Hondas are making the switch over to Yamaha. And, um, and then, you know, you got riders that come into the sport right now. Um, I don't know what else you'd get, you know, I mean, the, and I tell people too, like, even off record, it's like, it makes so much sense to go buy a Yamaha, first of all, because I don't know what else you'd be, you know, what else you're going to find, but it's such a great machine right off the showroom floor. And those guys in the pro class pro stock class prove that, um, man, you can just go, go purchase that thing and, and head right to the track with it. It's amazing. 
Yeah, and that's the great thing about that pro stock class too, is I mean, you can literally do just that. But, you know, not only you know, is, is it, of course, great to see Yamaha getting the wins across the board, but, you know, it just shows that there's still so much enthusiasm for the sport and there's still so much support for the sport. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with, with Max Lindquist getting the Pro-Am and then, you know, Chad Wynn, Chad Wynn and Winnie again, but also all of the people that are in that pro stock, I mean, it just shows that, we have so much more growth and opportunity for us, you know, just for generations. And the fact that Yamaha can still do that and not just like, ah, no, we're done with that. We're moving on type of deal. I mean, that's, that's what I love. That's what I like to see more than anything else. Yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's just, um, and I'll get to this. I think we have a, we have a, even a fan question more about that. Like, like where does this, you know, what uh, motivates Yamaha to continue to support our sport when they necessarily aren't getting pushed by any other brand, but we'll get to that later. But I mean, yeah, you're exactly right. The, the, the Yamaha um, dominance in this space is so cool to see with the way they're supporting us. And as we look to the future, um, I have to believe it's only going to grow. I think this Yamaha movement has been continuing to gain momentum. And um, next year, I think we're going to see even more growth than we did this past season. I, I truly believe that. Yeah. I mean, as they say, uh, what is it? Competition is healthy, but domination is immunity. So, I mean, it, you know, I, I definitely love a healthy competition, but I'll take the domination. <laughs> no, there you go. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, and one main reason why I expect, you know, more growth is Joel. Joel Hetrick announces that Phoenix Racing is, um, you know, going to ride Yamahas in 2021. And it only took a few days for me to start getting messages from people saying, hey, I switched to Yamaha too, you know? So um, I feel like that's going to be, you know, that's going to be another driving force. It's another feather in the cap of Yamaha to see a guy like Joel Hetrick making the switch to the YFZ 450R. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, that was, that was definitely huge. And even when I heard rumors of it internally, it's like, and I was just trying to bite my tongue and stay as quiet as I could on it. But, you know, it was just, it was so cool to know that that was even in the works and on the table. And I think that even just says a lot about our kind of proven off-road promise we have, you know, where we're just ultimate capability, comfort, and confidence, but just the confidence in the vehicle, its capabilities, and, you know, the reliability as well. And just to have someone like Hetrick on board, I mean, you know, from a manufacturer standpoint, that's awesome. But I mean, I think that's going to make some even more great racing going into the next couple of years here. Well, and think about it. I mean, for Phoenix, they're trying to make their um, program better in their ma- so like their big change is making the switch to Yamaha. I just think it's uh, think it's incredible. So, give me your perspective because on the last episode, Chad and I finished our conversation by basically sharing a belief that Joel switching to Yamaha is a is a great um, thing for our sport and you know, like you and I kind of just mentioned, but he was the opposite of Yamaha. He was and is Chad's biggest rival. Um, But with Yamaha continuing to improve and innovate the ATV, um, you know, and corporate continuing to prioritize, you know, ATVs, sport ATVs. And and we say it every week, Yamaha is the number one supporter of ATV racing. So I, I have to believe that Yamaha uh, at a corporate level and you guys, and, and just across the board has to be so proud to see, um, you guys put together a machine that was the envy of Joel Hattrick. And now here comes Phoenix racing and they're going to be on Yamaha's too. I just think it's a I think Like I said, it's a changing of the guard and that's, that's a, that's a huge, huge news within our sport. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, that, that there were, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, and they saw that too. I mean, heck, even I had to, you know, watch that video over and over again, you know, because even though he's now riding blue, it's still all, you know, kind of red and white. So it's like, okay, yeah, that's okay. It definitely is, you know. So yep. you know, there are even a lot of questions out there. Right? People wonder if it was a hoax and all that stuff as well. But <laughs> no doubt. I mean, again, it just it shows that the confidence that so many people have in the vehicle. So we'll, we'll, we'll take it and run with it as much as we can. And, yeah, it's, it's a feather in the cap, no doubt about it. That's awesome. So from what I've been told, um, and we got a bunch of questions about this, so that's why I wanted to address it with you here, but there is no factory affiliation with Joel, right? There, or at least that's what I've been told up to this point. Right. I mean, we have our normal racing contacts and stuff, uh, you know, in touch. I don't know the extent of what the agreement or deal is or anything like that at all, but, you know, we did help 
help them uh, acquire some of the YFZs, which, you know, okay. the way the industry has been this year, that in itself, in and of itself, is definitely no easy task there, to say the least. Um, don't have the full scoop of details on it. You know, maybe maybe once I get the guys behind closed doors, that's an opportunity for a future show there. But, okay. um, no, I mean, it, 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 it's even just the way that kind of factor support is these days. You know, we have our Blue Crew, Blue Crew program that, you know, supports racers and, and does all the things there. But, yeah, from a, a factory standpoint, I mean, don't have anything direct with Joel. Sure. But uh, like you talked about that, um, that program that you guys run and the contingency and all that stuff is huge. And so he should for sure be able to benefit from that. And then um, even, I know Casey and I talked about this a little bit, but even going to the dirt bike side of things, um, you know, uh, dealers can can play kind of a middleman to help get some support and um and stuff like that so i wouldn't be surprised if we see some of that but yeah uh i didn't think that there was like necessarily factory affiliation um but yeah i mean yamaha is gonna like there's built-in built-in ways that yamaha can benefit um or help the the phoenix racing team Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, he may have seen the, uh, the $10,000 payout we have in the pro class or, or maybe, I don't know, Chad told him that, uh, you know, he knows I have a soft spot in my heart when it comes to racing and everything. So I'm, I'm easy to get uh, support and stuff out of, even though I'm, I'm just the communications guy. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. I love it. So let's talk about um, your factory affiliated rider there. Of course, you just mentioned him um, seven time champ. Now, Chad Weenan, what can you say about that guy? When he made the switch to Yamaha in 2012, he had been a pro for the better part of a decade, really. Um, he had never won a championship. Similarly, the new YFZ at the time was unproven and had never won. And then Chad goes on a tear of seven championships in nine years aboard his Yamaha. What a marriage and what an, uh, a great ambassador for the brand he is. Yeah, I mean, that, that's unquestionably so. You know, there's so many great things to say about Chad. You know, it's cool because we've watched him growing up throughout the years. You know, we've we've been with him all the way throughout. You know, his ups and downs, and it really just kind of proves that you know he's part of the family, and and you know we are uh, kind of all family at Yamaha. Um, you know, anyone that rides Yamaha is realistically family. And now that we've seen Chad win seven Pro Class champions championships, now I mean, you know, we went through those struggles, we went through those wins and everything right there along with them. So you know, even though you know. Chad can say like, oh yeah, you know, he's, or we could say that Chad's won all these championships for us and, you know, how it speaks to the wives who 450 are and all that good stuff. I mean, for us, it's, you know, that's a win for Yamaha. That's a win for us as a family and everything, you know, I mean, again, we, we'd love to see that. And that's people cheering in the offices that are dealerships across the nation. And even at our factory down in Noonan, Georgia, where they're building the YFC 450 R, uh, there really is nothing better than going to the guys on the factory line, seeing their faces light up when Chad or even Thomas Brown, anyone on the Yamaha is just on the podium. And of course, best of all, when they get to raise that number one plate at the end. So yeah, he's just an upstanding guy. And with our race and stuff too, it's pretty cool just to kind of get a little sidetracked here, but we have a wall of champions event that we'll traditionally do every year. We bring all of our past and current championship uh, champions into the office, just kind of recognize them and all that good stuff. And yep. it really gives you a good peek behind the curtain on what a racer, what a champion is like. And, you know, across the board, everyone that's been with Yamaha, they really are the true champions to where, you know, the great stewards of the sport, they represent themselves in such an amazing man manner. And Chad, obviously, I mean, he's one of those guys, no doubt about it. He's kind, he's humble as a father, husband, racer, and even the, a person everyone they meets. And you know, the fact that even just he wants to grow the sport by getting that stock class and everything ramped up and going, I think just, um, you know, again, no, nothing but nice things to say about the guy. Yeah, he's a true champion. He's just got an aura about himself. Um, I feel like, and yeah, it's been a it's been a great marriage. Uh, great doesn't even really begin to begin to um, describe the 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 lasting impact I think that Yamaha and Chad Weenan together have created. So um, really cool. So when we were talking to Chad on the previous episode, he wanted us to ask you. If you could attend any race, past, present, or future, anywhere in the world at any point in time, what would it be? Because we know that you're a, you're a racing fanatic too. So uh, he wanted to get your opinion on this. 
And that's the thing that it honestly, that's what makes it so difficult for me because I am such a racing fan. For me, yeah, I'd love to like go see Team USA just dominate a quad across the nations. Um, but I mean, as long as I'm at a race, I'm happy. You know, I mean, I still do all the uh, the, the other things I have to do, uh, you know, for work and all that stuff. But just any time that I get to go to a race, I mean, like, so when we're all quarantined and stuff in Georgia, mm-hmm. when things finally started kind of loosen up and open back up, there were two rounds at Aonia Pass that, uh, you know, weren't too far from here. So, I mean, that was the first thing I did back-to-back weekends and just being able to get back out again, see those guys and, and like, I mean, they're just family in the end, you know I mean? I just consider them like my racing family, everything, whether they're blood related or not. And it is so great to be around them. So, I mean, as long as I'm at the races, I'm happy. And I, I there's so many, I could go back in history and say, man, that would be so cool to be there. I mean, heck, even when I was younger, I'd, I worked at a dealership for, I don't know, it was almost a dozen years, really. And okay. um, yeah, I got to be like one of the flaggers and stuff for the Supercross for a couple of years. So just being that close to race and stuff was so cool and you know, been a been a part of it all my life. So, I mean, it, it, it literally goes with me wherever I go. So, yeah, as long as I'm at the track, man, I'm, I'm happy. I, I, I hate to kind of cop out like that, but uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's my answer. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay. Well, you were, uh, Chad will probably be happy with your answer because he told us that the correct answer to the question was quad cross of nations in, in 2021. Um, he, <laughs> yeah, he wants you there. So uh, maybe, maybe uh, he queued you up for that one, but um, it would be amazing for you to go to an event like that because to have Yamaha's representation there would be incredible. Um, but I'll tell you, I mean, you referenced Aonia Pass and to see you at the races um, there and to see representation from Yamaha at our ATV motocross nationals, I just feel like that's so cool. That's such a big thing for for the sport. And I think people are starting to notice, um, I believe people are starting to understand that we need to continue to back the brand that continues to support our sport. So to see you know, to see you at the races in a, you know, in your Yamaha garb, um, as a representation of Yamaha at our races, I just feel like that's cool. So, uh, yeah, maybe we need to work on getting you over to the quad cross the nations. Yeah, no, that's funny that, uh, that Chad actually said that too. I mean, that, that would be phenomenal. You know, or just like you said, anyone representing Yamaha being there would be just great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it just like you said too, I mean, when, when, you get to go to the race, you meet all the people. And, you know, so many times they, they feel kind of disconnected from a manufacturer, from any other sponsors or anything. So yep. you know, just going up to someone, shaking their hands, saying hello, saying hi. And I mean, it, it means the world to them, but it also means the world to us. So I'll, I'll go to as many as I possibly can. And heck, even, uh, you know, you know I, I handle the Yamaha Outdoor social channel stuff. I mean, you know, send us a dm we're open to chat i'm open to chat i mean that that's how we pretty much got uh, connected and everything too so yeah anything that i can do to support like i said i got that soft spot in my soft spot in my heart so i'm here <laughs> I, I love to hear that and yeah i do think that that's very cool um because yet yeah, you're exactly right there there is that kind of disconnect feel sometimes from big corporations big brands big sponsors whatever and yeah i mean you're kind of bridging that gap so i feel like that is that is a a really big thing for um for us for the sport and and i again i think that you supporting i mean even you personally obviously yamaha corporate but then you bridging that gap being uh approachable being personable and um and and again like even with our relationship with you guys i feel like like that's something i'm proud of is to kind of bang the table and uh and and preach that you know yamaha is doing so many great things that we need to be be behind you guys and i mean candidly the only thing that stopped me at this point is my and on a personal level is um having such an established you know, personal program, having all the parts and stuff that I have from riding TRXs for, you know, fit literally 15 years. But, um, you know, I've been saying for a while, I'm going to make the switch one way or another. It's only a matter of time. I've been a, been a Yamaha guy at heart since I was a little boy. That's how I was raised. That's how my dad was. So um, when I say we're team blue crew here at digging deep, I truly mean it. Uh, so 
you know, like I said, just everything you guys are doing. And I've been saying, like I said, for about a year that I'm going to make the switch too. And uh, it's only a matter of time. And I think that uh, it's about that time. So I, I, I really well, it, it is funny too, because I've seen so many people on social to make that comment, like, Oh, you switching to Yamaha? Are you switching to Yamaha now? Or even like people being like, well, like this guy rides for Yamaha. Like, why are you sponsoring his podcast and all this stuff? It's like, man, it, again, it's about the sport. Like I, mm -hmm. if you yeah. ride Yamaha, heck yeah. If not, who cares? Like, let's go ride. As long as you're riding, like we're fine. We're happy. And I think, uh, you know, even kind of going back to what you're saying earlier with uh, the disconnect that manufacturers seem to have, I mean, a lot of, a lot of consumers, you know, they'll take that as arrogance on all oh, they, you know, they won't even give me the time of day, but it's like, oh man, honestly, you know, as they say, like in our industry, you don't do it for the money, you do it for the love of it. And so it's, it's, it's not because, you know, we don't want to talk to you. We're just ignoring you. It's because, we're overwhelmed with everything that we're doing too, but you know, any time that we can make a connection, we're, we're definitely here. So yeah, like I said, as long as we're all riding, then that makes me happy at least. Absolutely. And um, I feel like you're exactly right. It's a, it takes a lot of diligence um, and effort on your part to connect with all the people that probably tag you in their posts and, and, you know, uh, and all that stuff are reaching out to you at Yamaha Outdoors and all that stuff. So I feel like I see other riders um, within our sport or whatever, or GNCC stuff like that, tag you in posts in to see that Yamaha Outdoors liked their post and then Yamaha Outdoors comments on it with like a great job or, you know, some fire emojis or whatever it is. I feel like oh, yeah. that that's such a cool thing. Like I think about um, when I was younger and, and having people like you, you know, liking my posts or commenting on my posts. It's like, holy crap, like Yamaha just liked, liked my picture. I just feel like, I feel like that uh, all around is just such a, such a cool thing, such a cool look for Yamaha. So you're doing an incredible job. No, I appreciate it. That's definitely what I do. Cause you know, we, we've all been there. And even, you know, when we were younger, it was just like the high five or, you know, just getting that autograph with the race or whatever. I mean, just those small little things. And you remember that, you know, for the rest of your life and, Again, even if they, you know, end up switching brands or something like that on later, that as long as they're still riding, they're still in the sport. And, you know, because of that one comment or emoji that they got, I mean, you know, that's, that's the least we can do. I feel like that, um, I feel like that creates some like loyalty and passion too, you know, like, um, I feel like, the, like you said, just creating this, Hey, we, we see what you're doing. Um, I just, uh, again, I, I think that that's the coolest thing. And I think that people really appreciate it. I really do. Yeah, there's, there's no shortage of, uh, of passion in our industry. So I, I yeah. definitely agree with you there. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, I, I think that um, next year is going to be another incredible year for Yamaha and the YFZ with, with Chad and now Joel. Um, you got, you know, Nick Januso will continue on a Yamaha. I'm sure Alan Myers, Max Linquist is coming. We talked about him. Logan Stanfield was a top 10 pro this year, and he'll be back on a Yamaha and more, obviously, as you go down through the classes. It's going to be super exciting and uh, I can't wait to uh, to come back and talk about it now um, now that you know I guess I we've had conversations you and I but um, maybe we're gonna have to create a little more uh, regular regular drop in on the show by you because I love uh, just hearing the passion in your voice um, and as as Yamaha this movement continues to grow and grow and grow it makes only only more sense to have you on more often heck yeah I'm uh, happy to be on whenever you need me all right, man. Well, let's transition uh, into a couple listener questions. We got a number of them for you here. So we're, we're just going to um, comment on a few. We got a bunch of questions about the release of the 2021 models, and I'm totally in the dark on this. I know nothing about it. So are there 21, 2021 YFCs coming or is this a, is this a COVID situation? Because, you know, the motorsports market, as far as manufacturing and distributing um, of vehicles isn't ideal, I don't think, or hasn't been. So um, what can you tell us about the 2021 YFZ models? Yeah, that was, that was a perfect segue there. I mean, speaking of passion, that's uh, anytime we don't announce a model right away, you know, people definitely freak out, especially when it comes to sport ATVs and the way that things have been going. I mean, that, as always, I can't talk about future hypothetical products and all that good stuff, but yep. you know, we will be announcing our 2021 sport ATVs first quarter next year. So we're not doing away with them. There's nothing like that. You know, people can uh, can kind of calm down there because you know there was a time where even when I saw it too, I started to freak out and ask all these questions. But simply just haven't announced them yet. Okay. Simple. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, you know how that goes with uh, people on social media or whatever. They like to go. They like to go doomsday on us. So we got a. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got a number of those questions. So I wanted to uh, to at least ask. So that's great news. Great news for everybody listening that the 2021s are are coming and um, they can look for some announcements going forward. The other question that uh, I really liked as I scrolled through the questions we got for you was um, from Watson Motorsports, and he asked, with all the other manufacturers leaving the sport uh or sport atvs i should say behind nearly a decade ago what is the reasoning for yamaha continuing to innovate and improve the yfz 450r and i have to imagine that you're gonna say something about passion because that's been the lasting impression i've gotten from this conversation with you yeah yeah i mean the great question first off but no doubt about it. i mean it's, it's our passion but you know racing is in our blood you know you look at even just on the side by side end our yxc 1000 r i mean there's a reason why that thing is a five-speed sequential shift manual transmission because it's that pure sport direct connection. Same thing you get on the YFZ 450R, you know? I mean, it just racing's in our blood and, you know, it's all a part of us. So we, we, we have to do it essentially, you know? It's, 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 it's a passion that we all have and that everyone from the people answering the phones at our customer support level all the way down to the guys that are going out and that are testing. I mean, we... We all love racing. We all watch racing all the time. So we, we literally put our blood, sweat, blood, sweat, and tears into the vehicle. I, I absolutely love that take from you because um, even say there was other brands out there making sport quads at the moment. If you even go back to the history, there was, there was manufacturers um, that were maybe more conservative and, and stuff like that. And they're just trying to roll out a, roll out a machine for people to bomb around on. And that's not Yamaha at all. You know, the, the innovation, the passion for racing, this motivation to continue to get better and better. You look at the machine that you guys have now with, you know, just the improved um, suspension and handling, and it comes with good tires and it comes with the slipper clutch now and all these things. It's like, man, how do you not want to support that brand, right? And that, that's the thing. Is so you know, I alluded to it earlier. Our proven off-road promise for its you know capability, comfort, confidence. We've no, been known for durability and reliability for the longest time now. Mm-hmm. But you know, when I first got on board with the Yamaha, it's so funny because you know I was like, oh, the the perfect job would be you know one of the testing guys because all they get to do is just ride all day and it's the best thing and all that. But then now that I work side by side of those guys and. I hear the stories that they go through and the things not only they put themselves through, but they put their vehicles through. Yep. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that job anymore. But again, it, it's all for the customers at the end because we know that they spend their hard earned money to, you know, just buy the vehicle alone and on top of the fact they have to, you know, go out either pay to ride for the day or race and all that stuff as well. I mean, the last thing that we want is for them to worry about their vehicle for it to break down. And the only thing we want is for them or for the vehicle to perform and Mm -hmm. for them just to enjoy it and have a good time. Exactly. I mean, you know, my parents own a, own a ATV and motorcycle shop. And so growing up, um, not only I always rode Yamahas and dating back to, you know, 15 plus years ago. And I had, you know, I had like 10 blasters over the years and uh, I was so reluctant that I didn't even want to barely move up to a big quad. Cause I loved my blasters so much that I was just, I was like, no dad, I'm a Yamaha guy. We're sticking on Yamahas forever. But where I was going with this story is being around the, the industry for literally my whole life being, uh, being born into to it, I, I can hear my dad saying, um, you know, it's a Yamaha. It's what do you expect? It's great. It's never going to break or, or it, it runs like a Yamaha. It's going to run for forever. And that's just been the, the stigma that's always been um, kind of, kind of ingrained in me. But then when, like I said, I, I, before, before, before there was even a digging deep, before there was a relationship between you and I, um, I remember reading some of these uh, press releases about the new Yamaha quads and being like, look at the stuff they're doing. Like they're continuing, they're creating um, a great machine for, you know, whatever you're doing with it, but a, a phenomenal race sport ATV. And, uh, and, and I just think that that's the coolest thing. Yeah, and, and to top it all out, the fact that we're actually doing that down at our plant in Noonan, Georgia. And you know, I, I, kind of mentioned earlier there too but like the guys that are 
guys and girls that are down on the line, you know, and building the things for us. And then they, they get to see it, you know, from tip to tail. And then of course, again, on the podium, I mean, it's just, if, if you ever get down to Georgia, definitely know we have to connect because it is an amazing operation to see them down there. And, that's for me to seals the deal. When you have something that's durable, it's reliable, like you said, it's been known that way for generations. But then knowing that we're doing it all here from the States and in the States, yes. I mean, it, it yes. seems it's so much more than, you know, what people traditionally see from, you know, Yamaha being a Japanese brand. Right. I mean, and I think that that does get lost in the shuffle. So I'm glad that you were able to kind of expose that because yes, the fact that they're built here and then um, you talk about people just like you and I, you know, or just like me, just like our listeners building these things and then the passion that they have and then to, to roll out these beautiful, uh, unprecedented, un rivaled machines and then to go see guys like chad ween and you know max link was all these guys in atv motocross walker fowler i mean we didn't even mention him to this point all the domination that he's had uh basically doing what chad's done in the motocross world he's doing it in gncc um i just across the board that's you guys yamaha is who that the entire sport should be supporting and uh and i mean I guess I don't know how else to say it other than that we sure are grateful that Yamaha decided to stick around for the the sport that we love so much. And um, we sure are glad here at Digging Deep to be a part of the Yamaha movement. That's for sure. Yeah, and we're, we're glad to uh, to be on board too. And even heck with, uh, you know, with Wiener, like you talked about, with all of his wins and everything, and, and Fowler too, I mean, getting his, uh, his sixth championship now in the GNCC, I mean, uh, okay, sorry. Going back to my point on Wien, I mean, he had 153 consecutive podium finishes. The only reason why he didn't have his 154th was because of uh, I think he broke his chain or something like that. So it was again, a chain. that, that yep. speaks to that. Term. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And of course, it was just like a fluke deal, and uh -huh. you just never know. But uh, I'll, just to kind of give you a little peek behind the curtain, it's going to be fun. I have a event coming up here soon to where I'm actually going to have Chad Wien and, and Walker Fowler together. Okay. Not what you think it'd be for, though. It's going to be for a, uh, a whitetail hunt out in Texas. So I, I heard about this, and Chad is very excited. <laughs> and I'm so stoked to be able to get those guys together. I mean, that you know, both of them being champions this year, multi-time champions, pretty much, you know, Yamaha, you know, in their blood as well. But uh, it's going to be cool to see a completely different perspective on both of those guys. So I'm looking forward to it. That's so cool. And again, I feel like this embodies what you've been saying about the family and about all all these things, just um, getting all these champions together, doing events like you're like you're going to be doing on this hunt. And, and I was thinking this before your and I's conversation here, when I was talking to Chad, I was like, just the, the way that you take care of your athletes, the way that you guys value them. And, uh, and I just, um, if this conversation doesn't make people want to go run to the dealership and buy, buy a new Yamaha 450, I don't know what, what does. Cause I, uh, I had to refrain from running out of the interview right now just to go, uh, go pick one up. I, I, I can't <laughs> lie. So, um, but Scott, I, I appreciate your input. You're, you're making the time for me here. It's always a pleasure um, to talk to you and to communicate with you, but it was an absolute pleasure to have you on. It's been, uh, it's been such an honor, like I said a few times, to be teamed up for 2020. And, um, you know, I hope that we can keep things going long into the future. That's for sure. Heck yeah. No, I mean, the, the feeling is definitely mutual here. And uh, I don't think we're, we're going to be stopping anytime soon. So sounds like a good plan. Yeah, we just need to figure out a way to change the color of my quad to blue. That's the next. That's the, <laughs> that's the next I thing that I, I'm. It's the next thing I'm I working think I on. I know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to hear it. Well, I really appreciate it, buddy, and uh, we're definitely gonna make you uh, make you a regular guest to uh, get your input on racing. Now that I know um, how much uh, how much this passion just. Um, you know, it bleeds out of you or however you want to say it. So I'm sure the listeners are loving it too. And uh, I just really appreciate you making, making the time for us. Yeah, my pleasure. Like, I was, uh, like you kind of said there, I mean, as long as the listeners are okay with it, then I'll, I'll be happy to join anytime that you, you want me to. Yeah. Like I said, again, bridging, bridging the gap from, from corporate to, uh, to right to the, right to the base, right to the fan, right to the listener. So um, really appreciate it, buddy. That's Scott Newby from Yamaha. Keep up the great work, pal. Thanks so much. What an episode. Stoked to finally get Joel on to talk about the major changes to his program and then to hear a voice from Yamaha made this episode a monumental one in my eyes. Major thanks to tonight's guests, Joel Hetrick and Scott Newby. 
Thanks to my producer, Dallas Jansen, my brother, who always finds time to fit the podcast into his busy schedule. Thanks to Brooke. Thanks to our sponsors, CST Tires, Yamaha, Valvoline, SSI Decals, DID Racing Chain, Wienan Motorsports, the Decker Training Facility, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV Components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, Evans Waterless Power Sports Coolant, Forworks Carbon, DP Brakes, Gripped Gloves, Avocado Green Mattress, Roman Health, Factory 43, and Bike Strikes and Quads, LLC. Support the brands that support our show, and don't forget to use those codes to save. Find them on our website, as well as access the Rocky Mountain ATVMC link to help us out. And most of all, thanks to you guys for listening. If you're interested in show merchandise, Digging Deep shirts, hoodies, and more are available with free shipping on our website today. Show your support by wearing our apparel. And if you're looking for another easy way to support our efforts, visit our website and click the Buy Me a Coffee button. By doing so, this allows you to set up a one-time or monthly contribution to help us out. Remember, you can call our voicemail line at any time, 920-569-3519. Give us a call today and you may hear yourself on an upcoming episode. Follow the show on social media, Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast, and myself, Cody Jansen, for additional behind-the-scenes content this off-season. And keep taking us in those screenshots showing that you're listening. I promise to keep sharing them. It's greatly appreciated, and I like to think that it helps us grow our following. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. Basically, wherever you find podcasts, you'll find the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast. You can also find all of our episodes, additional podcast providers, sponsor links and discount codes, our show merchandise, and more, all on our website, diggingdeepatvmx.com, so check that out today. As always, subscribe to the show, give us a rating, tell your friends, share our posts, wear our shirts and hoodies. Congrats to Joel Hetrick and all the positive changes to his program for 2021. He sure sounds amped up about them. And hell, congrats to Yamaha on an absolutely phenomenal season as well. With that, for Joel Hetrick, Scott Newby, Dallas Jansen, Brooke Catherine, and I'm your host, Cody Jansen, thanks for listening to the number one podcast in ATV racing, a million downloads and counting. Until next time, thanks for joining us and digging deep with the stars of ATV Motocross. guys were hauling ass for real i remember watching doug gus i don't know who it was steel city running the same times friday afternoon as james stewart was on sunday back then at steel city i i, I would need to check this out I, I i'm dead serious it was mental i've never seen quads go that fast it's not easy, Steve. It's not easy. Listen, JB. I <laughs> no, don't want to hear. It's not easy. I don't want to hear. Quad leaders are freaking nice. You don't chew up. big red. Then. What the? <laughs> Support for the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, providing you with the best tools for your grooming experience. Let's face it, we've all had our fair share of close calls while trimming below the belt. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. They've spent years perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0. The -the state-of-the-art trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin care technology, a battery that will last up to 90 minutes, waterproof technology that allows you to groom in the shower, and an LED light feature which illuminates grooming areas for closer and more precise trimming. We both know that cleaning up down there is a must, so you might as well use the best. Help us usher in a new outside the industry sponsor and solidify a relationship with this great company long into the future, all while improving your grooming experience. Trim that junk of yours and order today to help us out. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20.